Hey, I'm Sean Martin. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the bed setup I have on my K40 laser. Um, I've owned this K40 for about a year and uh, I purchased a 80 watt red and black from China about three months ago as well. When I first bought the K40, uh, I was told that, oh, you're going to spend hundreds on upgrades, don't bother. I spent very little on upgrades and I'm still using the K40 in the same configuration. And a lot of the features on the newer 80 watt, I don't even bother to use as well. So I'm going to tell you why I don't think you need to spend a whole bunch of money uh, or time upgrading the bed for your K40 laser. Um, basically, you're going to find, or at least I've found, that I'm either cutting eighth inch or quarter inch material almost all the time. Occasionally, I'm going to put something taller in there. Occasionally, I'm going to mess with something. Um, and so my bed setup is designed so that I can pull everything out really easily and stick something taller in there with some shims under it, and it works just fine. So what I did is based on a very simple device, um, something I cut on the K40, actually. Um, let's see if I can grab one here. This is just uh, two pieces of MDF. You can cut it out of Baltic birch or acrylic if you like, but they just nest together and create what's called a standoff. And that's what I set my material on. I'll get to that in a minute. The main bed is supported on something like this. It's the same thing, it's just got neodymium magnets on top and bottom so that they stick to the sheet metal in the bottom of your, uh, of your laser. Now when you look inside my laser here, you're gonna see that I've removed everything. The bed that comes on the machine is totally useless. It's, I'm not even sure why they even bother to manufacture it because it doesn't do anything that at least anybody I know of in the US is actually using it to do. So just remove all of it. There'll be some little standoffs uh, attached to screws, so you'll have to remove them from the bottom and, and just get the standoffs out of there. Then I've mounted over the bed section a piece of uh, three quarter inch MDF with uh, some screws through the holes that the standoffs were mounted on. And that just makes the machine more rigid so that uh, it's not as floppy on the bottom. Also allows me to hang it off the edge of a bench fairly easily, which is kind of cool because if my bench is too short, I can slide it off the edge a bit and put my computer on the side. So basically, I'm going to take these uh, standoffs that have the neodymium magnets on them and I'm going to put them in the four corners of the machine here. And then I just have a piece of uh, 18 gauge cold rolled steel. Mine's a little dirty right now. And that's just going to slip into the machine uh, like this. And you want to kind of be careful because you can move those magnets around if you're not. But you're just going to slide that in there so you're about in the right position. Set it down on the magnets. And then wobble it around in order to get those standoffs to kind of settle in where they belong. So when you're ready to cut material, you're just going to set a standoff that's the right height on top of here and toss your material on top of it and cut. The way you determine what height these need to be is just use one of your incline uh, tests that tell you where your, uh, where your focal point is for your laser. Measure the distance below the head here and then cut a, uh, a standoff that will get your material where it needs to be so it's at that focal length. Um, the reason these work so much better than a honeycomb bed is because a honeycomb bed doesn't allow air to flow underneath your material. Uh, it just traps all the gas, all the smoke, all the soot right against the material and that stains the bottom side. When you have a standoff system like this, you get airflow underneath your material and it carries the smoke away and it doesn't stain the bottom side of your material. So this is super effective. It gives you the same result every single time because you know, oh, I'm cutting quarter inch, I'm putting that standoff in or eighth inch, either way. And uh, 
it just works. It's always right. You don't have to do any guessing to find out whether or not you've hit the right focal length or any additional measuring. You just did it once and you're done. So if you like what you see in here, uh, hit subscribe, make a comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.